Move over, Mario. Show's over, Street Fighter, and it's double trouble for Double Dragon. Because today on PodQuest, we handle the tough questions. Best video game movie ever. I'm Paul English, player three, joined as always by... Kelsey Polnick, player two, and that is a tough question. <laughs> it's a very tough question. Justin Lyon, player one. And I have returned after gestating in Jaybird's chest like a weapon of death. <laughs> Xenomorph, ready to burst forth and give you high-quality <laughs> questing. I just potty. picture like you, you come out the chest like instead of just like the alien, you just come out like like a roundhouse kick or something. Just like that's <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I just fly away. Uh, and thanks again to Jordan last week. Um, he did an awesome job. It was great having him here. Yeah, I actually watched it and I thought he was a fantastic guest. I'd like to sit down with him and uh, talk. Smash Brothers and fighting games as well, if I ever get a chance. Even play some he, games with them. He seemed pretty interested in, in coming back again, so I think we can make that happen. Yeah, uh, you guys talked about a lot of really good stuff that I like. The Metal Gear Solid, you guys talked. I was like, oh, how did I miss this topic? <laughs> like, that's my that's my jam right there. Um, yeah, he played a ton of stuff, so we got to really dig into a good variety of stuff that last week. And mm-hmm. it's cool, too, because uh, I don't know his exact age, but he's definitely a generation... He's applying to college right now, is all I know. Yeah, so let's put him in the 17-year category. Yeah? So he's playing a lot of games that when I was his age, I was playing. Like uh, he's in, has interest in Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. Even Bayonetta One was like 2006. Yeah, around there. Yeah, that sounds mm-hmm. right. Um, yeah, that's pretty close. And like uh, talking about Sunshine and how he started with the GameCube and. Oh, he missed like the earlier ones, and he's kind of going back now. It's I think cool. that that one was a good example because, like you, like you said, like he started playing Mario at Mario Sunshine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Great for me, like we all we all played probably from 64. the very beginning yeah. in '64. Yeah. So, um, it's quite well, the... you'd never tell by my gameplay footage. <laughs> <laughs> um, that gameplay footage that lies buried deep within the hard drive deep, and will yeah. never be unlocked. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll have to go home and practice. But anyway, um, so today, as Paul's amazing intro that explained, was good, wasn't it? it was pretty good. So today we're talking about video game movies. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty good. I was recording a video yesterday, and you would not believe how many times I had to try to start my intro. I spit failed. Takes. Yeah, spit takes like twelve different times. So to get on the second one, that's pretty good. Um, but as the usual, why don't we do our usual, what we've been playing this week? Why don't we start with Paul since he was absent yeah, last week? Yeah, you've had an extra week to play stuff. I haven't been playing a whole bunch of stuff, actually. Uh, I haven't been playing as much PUBG and Rainbow. Kind of took a little bit of a break from it, just to, you know, when I go back to it, it'll be fresh and new and you can take a different angle at it. Um, played a little bit of Gunstar Heroes on the Genesis, nice. which cool. is always yeah. a fun yeah. game. I love that game. Um, some more Disney collection, and I think that's about it. Played uh, card game. I think it's Space Flux. Um, watched know, some VR. Yeah. Some friends play some VR. I wasn't really too into it with my bad back, but it was like a squash game and um, this like pirate fighting simulator that one. That's fun. I played that one. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Space Pirate Trainer, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, but uh, no that's more, about. No more Battlefront Two. I haven't played Battlefront 2 probably in the last two weeks. I've slowed down kind of on all my FPSs, giving it a little bit of, right. give it some time. Yep. Apparently their loot boxes are on their way back. Yeah, yeah exactly. They just, uh, yeah, the sales were a million less than they wanted, so they're, they're bringing the loot boxes back in the next couple months. Trying to rake it all back in. Yep. Um, finished Sopranos. It was my girlfriend's first time watching it, and it was my oof, fifth time watching it. The whole series? I love that Ouch. show. Um, I really like it. Uh just as good as I remember, she, like, the last couple episodes, she was like, I don't want to watch anymore. It's too intense. I don't want to watch anymore. Um, started Altered Carbon last night. I have, yes, I'm going to start that pretty soon. So I, it, it looks interesting. We have mixed reviews at the table so far. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else <laughs> have I watched? Just, a, just a, like, a mash of random stuff here and there. I haven't picked up Dragon Ball Z Fighters Z yet. Destin's the only one of us that has so far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yeah. Destin. Uh, you with me? All right. <laughs> um, for me, for playing games, though I did pick up Dragon Ball Z Fighters, um, I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter. 
Nice. Awesome. So nice. Um, I just found out that one of my uh, regular Y Schwartz players at the store is also really big into Monster Hunter. So I was playing with him last night and doing a little bit of extra grinding and stuff. Sweet. So nice. it's, you know, when we played the beta, that was pretty cool. But this, like, now that you actually have full access to the game, there are areas that are gorgeous. There's yeah. one area in particular, and I can't remember what the name of it's called, but it looks like a coral reef. Like, you look like you're underwater. But you're obviously like in a mountain range, so like it's 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 above it's like it's above water, like it's on land, but it looks like you're underwater in a coral reef. That's so, pretty cool. So that's cool. There was one creature we fought last night. It was I don't know, remember the name of it, but it kind of reminds me of you know that little dinosaur in Jurassic Park, the one that kills uh, the spitter, the spitter, the one that kills uh, Newman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of that, but when it brings out its little like. For these face fin things, yeah. it actually flashes and blinds you. Well, flashbang. But it, it does a little flashbang, but if you hold like a shield up, like because I do the the charge blade, yeah. so, which is the sword and shield and kind of turns into an axe. Yeah. If you have your shield up, it'll block it. Cool. So, but it's like the, the game is really cool because you have to be aware of, you know, what this creature is about to do because it gives you little telltales as to what it's about to do. Like, oh, it's about to. It's about to flashbang us, so I better have my shield ready to go so I can block it. Is it one of those games where it really benefits you to be switching up your armor and weapons all the time rather than mastering, like, one style weapon? Um, Because if you're, like, a bow and arrow and you don't have Armor for sure, because you will run into a lot of different creatures that maybe have different elements. Mm. Because some of your armor has, like, say, you know, you could have weakness to fire. And, you know, half the monsters all breathe fire, so. But for the weapons... um, you could change it out if you wanted to, but for me, I like using the charge blade. I think it's a kind of a nice. But if you like went into that particular fight without a shield, would you be at a huge disadvantage? Like, can you still take that? You would there? just have to be aware because, like, when it flashbangs, it has kind of an arc, so you right. just know you have to get out of there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. So does the flashbang just blind you, and you can still move around, or does it? Set no, you full paralysis? you it, you kind of get paralysis for like three seconds. Okay. But that's enough time for the creature to come and attack you. Right. So. Yeah. That's um. Cool. So I've been playing a lot of that. Um, what else have I been doing? Um, watching a lot of some newer anime that's out right now. There's one on Netflix right now that is gorgeous, and I can't remember who the the lead artist on it is, but I've seen the previous works. It's called uh, Violet Evergarden. Oh, so, uh, I saw the preview for that. Yeah. It does look it's, very good. It's gorgeous, yeah. it and nice. it's a nice, nice little story. You know, a young girl who, I guess she she loses her arms in a war, mm-hmm. and now she's being assigned to be. Um, essentially, like a typewriter, like she typewrites letters and stuff for people She's like who a can't. Stenographer. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's it's gorgeous. That's so cool. I quite like that. And then I think that's been about it. Otherwise, I've just been down and deep doing Pokemon trading card stuff. So nice. Um, found out last week that I'm an official judge. Sweet. That's interesting. So. Um, Do they call finally, you a judge, or aren't you like a professor? So yeah, they call them professors. I just I'm basic professor, but it's still enough to be a judge for a local tournament. So, nice. so and then we had the uh, Ultra Prism set got released as of yesterday. So definitely going to be a lot of trades happening later today at the store. Awesome, awesome. cool. That'll be sweet. That be you, Kels. Um, last week I said I thought I was on the last level of Actraiser Two, and I was. So I finished Actraiser Two. And then I went back and played Actraiser 1 and finished that one over the last week as well, which is a really cool game. Um, it's got the same side-scrolling stuff as the second one, but in between those, it's got a lot of city-building aspects, uh, almost like SimCity, but very, very, very basic. Um, so you're, you're growing your population, and you're helping them um, prevent some sicknesses and, and get new weapons and um, new technologies like building bridges and stuff. And as you grow your population, it makes your character stronger for the side-scrolling levels. So you get more health, more magic. Um, and then, so you got to basically populate the whole continent, and then the last level comes up, and you do another boss rush into the boss. Um, but the side-scrolling stuff in the first one, super, super, super easy. The second one was so much harder. Um, but it, it was neat pacing going back and forth between the, the side-scrolling stages and the sim-building stuff. Really enjoyed it. And the music's quite good, and the backgrounds in those games, both of them are unreal. Really, really cool for for Super Nintendo game to have backgrounds that beautiful. I've never played the first one, but I've played the second one. I've never beat it. I've always wanted to. It's a very difficult game. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it looks gorgeous. It does. The second one looks so beautiful. 
Uh, it's really fun, cool mechanics and stuff like that. Um, kind of like a, you don't hear a lot of people talking about it, so I'd say it's maybe a hidden gem for the Super Nintendo. I think the first one people have fond memories for. I think the second one gets overlooked a lot because it dropped the Sim stuff. It's not as unique yeah. of a game. Yeah. yeah, and maybe the difficulty level yeah. spiked. Yeah, quite, definitely. Quite high. And the magic system is too is really weird. It took me about half the game to cast spells reliably that I wanted to. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Neat. I look forward to looking up and see what this game looks like because I I have no yeah. information on it. So it's gorgeous. All right. Well, the, with then. With that, uh, let's do, I guess we're going into the, I guess we could call it the trailers part of today's episode. <laughs> the the leading trailers and the mm-hmm. upcoming info as we go into our news breakdown with our first story. Uh, the Guinness Book of World Records officially nixes Todd Rogers' dragster record off of the... And that is significant because that was the longest held record ever. Yeah. It was over 30 years. Um that's that's big yeah. news. So, that's... from my understanding, from what the story was, that this guy <coughs> he had the record for the longest time, and then it was recently a couple of weeks ago that somebody was trying to break the record, and they proved that it's physically impossible Not to quite. get this record. Um, is this has been a controversial record for years now, mm-hmm. um, and there's been a lot of like just the fact that it hasn't been even tied since then has been a big like, baby he didn't do it, and um, he was on the Ben Heck show I want to say two months ago. And Ben Heck, if you don't know him, he hacks all sorts of electronics, and he does a lot of cool video game stuff. Um, so he built a chip that would go into the Atari 2600 chip, so he could measure um, all the uh, the data running through the system as he played the game, as well as be able to kind of program like a taskbot style thing, so he mm-hmm. could see if a computer could even beat that time. And that was split into a two-part episode. And the second part, Todd Rogers was on that episode with him, trying to show him when the best times to shift the dragster are because it's like a it's a drag race you're trying to get to the yeah because yeah because it's you you start the dragster and you gotta shift the gears into first yeah. into second to third yeah and i think you you tilt the joystick to shift and you hit the uh button as your clutch mm. um so it's all about timing that one it's really really short record because his record was five, five minutes point, 51 seconds was it five minutes no, f- five seconds, five point yeah, five, five one. Yeah, five point. And the best that he could do with the computer, like having frame perfect inputs with Ben Heck on the show, even was five point five seven. And then prior to that, there was another guy, can't remember his name, um, Omni something. He had calculated all the, uh, he'd taken all the data from the actual game and made a spreadsheet out of what was possible, and and he came up with the the best possible record you could get um, with every frame perfect input was only 5.57. Mm-hmm. That's all people have been able to replicate since then. Um, but apparently, like, way back in the 80s, um, when this game was fairly new, um, Todd Rogers, like, performed in front of Activision heads and at trade shows and stuff and was able to get this live. No one's got any footage or photographs or anything of this. And nobody really remembers it, as the yeah. story goes on to tell. Yeah. Um, the Activision guys say, like, if he said he did it, he did it. Like, he was blowing our minds and doing things that none of us could thought it would possible. Yeah. Um, but, like I said, there's no actual proof of it. Yeah, he can't replicate it today. And I'm curious if, because going to like trade shows and going to Activision and doing stuff in front of like the heads of it, if he had a, like a special copy of the game, maybe that was made just for demos or something like that, and that's what he achieved it on. I don't know if that's come up at all. Um, like it, it didn't say that anywhere in there, right. but that's immediately what jumps in my mind is maybe he got version one and everyone has version one point whatever yeah something like that because that to me would make sense that there's that difference in the game mm-hmm. um and that's the only you know anything i've seen with twin galaxies uh the king of kong fistful of dollars um what's the guy's name that makes the hot sauce king of hot sauce um billy billy mitchell, billy mitchell. uh it all just seems like a big gong show. Speaking of Billy Mitchell, this is kind of related. Um, he, if you don't know him, he's had the he's been fighting for the Donkey Kong um, record, and he's got a for the longest time. He's bunch of other records, bunch of other ones. But he's that, like the that's quintessential the '80s gamer. Yeah. yeah, they just removed um, his Donkey Kong records through because they think there might have been cheating, tampering, or playing with uh, with a MAME emulator rather than on the actual hardware. Hmm. which is a slightly different game. So they 
they have different scores for those, but he they think he submitted MAME scores now as actual arcade scores. Because um, during that movie, The mm-hmm. King of Kong, Fistful of Dollars, or Fistful of Quarters, if you haven't checked that out, I highly it's recommend it. It's very entertaining. It. It's yeah. a very fun That's documentary. That's the documentary. It's on Netflix, isn't it? It used it to be. Or it was. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. not anymore. Um, and it's about a guy who... Uh, Steve Weeb. Steve Weeb, who loses his job, essentially, and he's kind of depressed. And he buys a Donkey Kong Jr., I think. Um, and he puts it in his garage, and he just, like, plays and plays, and he starts to get really good. And he's like, well, I'm going to submit this to... It wasn't Donkey um, Kong Jr., it was Donkey Kong. Was it Donkey Kong? Yeah. Um, and he submits it to Twin Galaxies. Uh, and then he be- beats the record, and then this Billy Mitchell guy's like, oh, well... I've been sitting I've on been, my score yeah, for 10 years. I've been years. sitting on this hidden score, and then he sends a bunch of people to go and investigate his machine, and they find all this stuff that it's like, it's not a proper machine, this was cheating, we want you to do it live. And then he does... It's just... It's so interesting to watch it. Like, it doesn't seem like it's a factual documentary. Yeah, like, that's... Like, what actually happens during he, it, but like apparently that's how Billy Mitchell is. Yeah, his scores are never verified by anyone that's not, like, a close friend or, like, a Twin Galaxies person that he's been involved with for yeah. a long time. Um, he's never come to the live events to do these things because they always have a... I think they call it a Kong off. Yeah. And they had, um, like, Steve Weeb and... What was the, the other surgeon guy? in the states that popped up after this movie that started yeah. ma- breaking scores too? That kind of raises some doubt that oh, if, definitely, if definitely. you're not willing to come and prove your skill live, and that you can only ever have with somebody that you confirm that you verify that they can verify it, that seems that it's seems off. Real and, shady. And, and that's like a really big, like he's been parodied a lot. Like I think in South Park, even he was parodied, <laughs> and maybe The Simpsons as well. I'm trying to think. He's they, like I think American they parried him in regular show American. too. Because yeah. there's an episode in regular show where Mordecai and Rigby go and play this dirt biking game, and then suddenly this gigantic floating head, which I think looks exactly similar to him, comes in and says, "Hey, you beat my score. I'm going to beat yeah, you." And that would what? definitely be him. That's funny. Okay. Um, but it's important because uh, Guinness gets all of their um, world records from Twin Galaxies. They get Twin Galaxies to verify things. So stuff like these, uh, like Todd Rogers scores and Billy Mitchell's, are being nixed now. And I think. This is the first time in a long time that Twin Galaxies is trying to rebuild some of their credibility because they like in the eighties, nineties, like they were it. Like yeah. you went to them, and then what was that old guy's name? That Walter Day. Walter Day. He always Day. wore the like referee, referee shirt. shirt yeah. and he I kind did. of lost his mind a little bit. Yeah, he's like a Buddhist monk or something. Now. And he plays like folk guitar, and yeah, he's a weird dude. Yeah. Um, so, I actually have my turtle certificate signed by him. Awesome. Um, yeah, That's that really so exciting. That was awesome. like right when he left, and he spelled my name wrong on it, so I had to resubmit to get another one, and then it was he left, so when I got my name spelled right on the next one, it has a different guy's signature. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I just caught him at the last, yeah, last yeah. minute before he took off. So, not that I want to sit on this story for too much longer, but is it fair for people to approach an old record and be like, hey, we just proved that, you know, your record's not possible, but yet there was, that record was set long ago, but there's no evidence to prove it anymore. Do you think that's fair? I I do. I I definitely do. I think um, it needs to be verified, and there just wasn't uh, easy ways to do that back then other than, like, sticking a video camera over. And some of those marathons are like, you can't even run a video camera that long back in that Mm -hmm. day. Well, and who would have thought that, it would have exploded that much when they were first doing this. Yeah. Like when Dallas that's, first came out. And... That's what my thought is right now because <laughs> they probably didn't, like you're saying, like the technology probably didn't exist to do a lot of digital verifying. Mm-hmm. But now that stuff exists now. But no, well, now the two that like uh, esports and speedruns and stuff are becoming huge, like multi million dollar things, um, there definitely should be a higher level of scrutiny around them. And if that means dredging up old scores, I think that's fair. Okay. I think so, too. I think, uh, like Cus said, they're trying to get the credibility back. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of stuff in the last eight years that's really come out and gone yeah. against and what th- they say. So. Twin Galaxies has changed ownership like three or four times yeah. in the last ten years, too. Like They keep trying to rebrand themselves, and I think this is probably the most positive step they've taken in this time. Yeah. Yeah, there was another Netflix documentary, the one that you might be thinking of. Is I think it was Thank You for Playing, and the guy's playing... Centipede, Centipede yeah. yeah, that was pretty depressing. To yeah, watch. that was a very depressing. Uh, it's another. In, it's not as fun <coughs> as King of Kong. No, but it's, it's like, just you it's just see just someone's good. like obsession, like almost ruin his relationships. Like, yeah, 
Yeah. It was it was it's an interesting watch. All right. Well, let's move on to our next story here. A uh, question to you guys: Do you, any of you guys have Nintendo stock? Of course not. Of course. <laughs> Maybe we should have because apparently Nintendo is doing very very, very well. well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had just released this week some stats on Nintendo um, doing very well, considering uh, one of the ones is the Nintendo Switch has sold more consoles than the Wii U in the Wii U's entire lifespan. And it hasn't even been a full year yet. And it hasn't even been a full year yet. Um, stats on here showing that as of December 31st, 2017, uh, 14... 0.86 million switches as of December 31st compared to 13.56 million Wii U systems. So that's that's a lot. That is nuts. Um, just looking at the rest of the stuff here. Uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has sold 6.7 million copies in the lo- in the no I thought nine months be last higher. year. That I know that's a that's an amazing number, but just because when it launched and there was actually more. Zelda sold in Switches for a short time, um, and the fact that that game got Game of the Year awards and stuff too, I I thought it was gonna be a much higher attach rate. Yeah, well, that granted, though, I remember seeing a lot of people that they couldn't afford a Switch or they couldn't find a Switch, but they weren't going to play Zelda until they got it for the Switch. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of people who were bypassing the Wii. Yeah, U it's version. it's definitely gonna keep climbing. Um, oh, yeah. But I was surprised that Mario overtook it in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, where is it? And Mario Kart. Yeah, too. Mar- yeah, Mario Odyssey came and came out in late October and sold nine point nine point zero seven million copies. So Mario Odyssey sold more than Legend of Zelda that, that in a shorter time frame. It just surprise surprises me. me, given one of them had ten months and one of them had like two months. That's doesn't crazy. surprise me. Nintendo Mario sells Nintendo. Yeah, and Zelda's never been their highest franchise. No. That and Metroid, like they have their followings, but it's but always they're not, said they're not Mario. Yeah. They're not Mario. The other news with that Smash Bros. The other news with that too is uh, Splatoon Two for the Switch has sold. <coughs> ex- uh, when was it? As of as at the end of 2017, sold exactly the same amount of copies, 4.91 million copies, as the original Splatoon hmm. to that date on its full run. So even Splatoon 2 has done That's a lot better. really, really good numbers for such a new franchise. Yeah. And sure. then with that Nintendo news, uh, Nintendo came out today that Mario Kart is coming out to mobile, which oh, yeah. I think is kind of weird. I'm not the biggest fan of Nintendo mobile stuff. Like the Miitomo shutting down, it was kind of fun when I first started for a little like while. For like a week and then, yeah. For like a week and then it just got kind of boring. But a lot of people seem to like the Animal Crossing one. And it'll be interesting to see how they do this Mario Kart one. Mario Kart Tour, which is supposed to come out in March. The It seems like the Fire Emblem one's got the model they want to replicate because that's been their most profitable one, mm-hmm. which is crazy when you're comparing that to Super Mario Run, mm-hmm. um, that it did so much better. Totally different models. So. I wonder how they're going to do this one too. Like, It's going to be like Mario Kart Tour. Is it like you're on a tour circuit or something and maybe you... I have no interest in this at all. Yeah, so yeah I, I have don't zero. Have I, I'd rather um, just continue playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no surprise that Mary, or Nintendo's doing so well. Um, this is by far the best console release with run of games in a very long time. Yeah, instead of like well, front, I guess, front-loading it like they did with the Wii U, they've got yeah. a nice, steady yeah. release schedule. That's a lot. And the Wii beneficial. sold... The Wii sold like crazy, and this is matching or slightly exceeding it in most territories. Yeah. 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 So that's pretty cool. Mobile games also seem to be big wave of the future. Some of my friends who work in the industry have talked about how they think branching out and making mobile games even on their own is kind of a big thing. I don't know if I agree with that, but, you know, they're in the industry and they're on the inside kind of looking out. Um, it's so hard they're... to disagree with them when you see the numbers they do yeah. over consoles because yeah. everyone's got a phone. Yeah, See, exactly. Yeah. With me, I used to do a lot of like games on my phone and stuff because like if I knew like I had a bunch of spare time or like I'm waiting on something to sit there and play. The work that I do right now, I don't have any time for that kind no. of stuff. So I like even the mobile game stuff that I picked up. Like I have a uh, Fate Grand Order that I kind of just got because I like the Fate series. 
but it's one of those apps where it's, you know, you got to kind of grind at it and stuff. And I just don't have the time to grind. I think that's the smart branding too, is to call them apps because people that don't want to be gamers, don't want to be identified as gamers, yeah. aren't gamers. They'll play apps all the time, which are basically games. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they'll spend a ton of time on them as much as crazy gamers do sometimes. And it's uh, more acceptable in like a round table discussion for more acceptable for people who don't identify themselves as gamers to be like, oh yeah, I was playing an app. Oh, what app do you have? Well, I have that app. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I was playing this game. Shun. Yeah, shun. <laughs> shun. Yeah. Um, well, even the thing, too, with phones, too, like, a lot of people upgrade their phones, like, every year. Yeah. With me, this one's been going three years. Um, it's gotten to the point where if I go to the Google Play Store, it won't let me download the Pokemon Online TCG because it says that immediately that my phone's not compatible. But because this is an Android, I can just go and download yeah. the APK directly, and it installs perfectly fine. Yeah. So. I, I think to go a little bit back to the Nintendo killing it right now, too, um, part of that has to do with Microsoft not killing it right now. Like They've mm-hmm. only got one major competitor instead of two at the moment. Taking mm-hmm. a back seat yeah. to... Uh... It's, I could see the Switch passing the Xbox One if the sales continue on both of them like they have. Well, there was also that, I, we didn't put it in our new stuff, but I think there was also this week, too, that a lot of people are thinking that PS4 is kind of hit, has hit its top mark and is dwindling down because they're not having as many console sales anymore. They still had, they had their best year of all time in 2017 like yeah. for any PlayStation system. Hmm. Yeah. It's weird because the one one news story I found, the found had, a, had a graph showing that their sales have been kind of dwindling down yeah but when your sales were like head and shoulders above yeah. everyone else for so long a Peaked small drop you're year. still above everybody else yeah. just not as far above them I guess yeah. um yeah it's <coughs> interesting uh little teaser for maybe next week's episode but big rumor me and kelsey were talking about yesterday mm-hmm. about microsoft so it'll be yeah. interesting to see i think it's more than a news story probably a full discussion so yeah so yeah, yeah we're, 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 we're gonna what, what was the rumor um, Microsoft is looking to acquire EA, Valve, and the company that owns PUBG. Okay, I saw... Yeah. We I don't want to get the, into I, it right now. Look, yeah, we won't get into it. I did see the thing that they were looking to get EA, and I'm like... Mm. It, surprisingly easy for Microsoft to do if they want. Yeah, they can just write a check. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, I don't. They're, so they're trying to pull a Disney then? They're trying we'll, to. We'll get into it next time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll get we'll some Sony news, though. Yeah, uh, this is actually pretty big news i thought there's been a lot of uh stuff coming out of <coughs> sony over the last two months um positions changing the ceo yeah. who's been with sony since i think it said like 1986 or something like that kaz harari kaz harari um is stepping Hurai, down right Hurai, yeah. yeah uh is stepping down from his position uh he's going to transition into a uh director role director of sony Mm -hmm. um and i can't remember the fellow who's taking up his position but he's also been with the company for a long time but a lot of people credit harai with um really taking sony to the next step he was like the driving force for the playstation 2 and the playstation 3 with him and andrew house gone like really close to each other it just seems like a totally new generation of sony like is about to happen well and it also because of course this would have happened back in the 90s when Harai kind of took over and uh, the other guy was brought over to Sony Entertainment mm-hmm. to work on the PlayStation and stuff like that. Um, it could either be, this is super exciting because we're going to see some new stuff coming out of Sony maybe, or super worrisome because with two really big figureheads stepping out of the company, is something happening behind the scenes or... Um, like he said he's been there since 86. Like, he's not a young guy. He's not a young guy. You might just be looking for more time with his well, family. Well, yeah, that's what it says. He wants yeah. to spend more time. His family uh, is located in California now, so he wants to spend more time with his family. But if you're losing two big driving forces who have done such big things and had good vision, are we going to see a decline in quality of product or innovation in product? Yeah. like um, That happens in companies quite with, a bit. Uh, I could see a bit of a decline because, like, the only time with Sony we've ever really seen a misstep was the launch of the PS3, um, that they were even able to turn that around after a couple of years. Yeah. But outside of that, it's pretty stellar record. Like, they PlayStation killed it right out of the gate. Two? Wow. PlayStation 2 was nuts. PlayStation 3 eventually, like, came back. PlayStation yeah. 4 is killing it. Uh, maybe on the portable side, they haven't been great, but I don't think they're really exploring well, that anymore. Well, on the portable side, they haven't been doing good here. 
Yeah. But they do really good in Japan, though, they because still, I still see Nintendo slaughters and four to I one still, still. I still, but I still see constantly though. There are numerous PS4 games that have PlayStation Vita ports yeah. for so them in Japan and stuff. The software's selling. The hardware is still not yeah. moving though. Yeah. So some people have it and they just really love it to death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a shame that the PlayStation portables, like the PSP and the Vita, didn't. Like explode as much. I loved here. the idea with the with the PS4 and the Vita that when you had the PlayStation Portable copy, that you just transferred your game data over to your portable one, yeah. and you could still keep playing the game, and then vice versa when you get back home. It's a cool. Mm-hmm. Idea. I thought that was cool a great idea. idea. Yeah, they just didn't catch on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with PlayStation. Yeah, I, I'm a little like this next year's obviously already like set Landed, in stone, yeah. but after probably that, probably a couple um, years, I'd say it's it's probably gonna. Yeah, changed significantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to um, see if the uh, PlayStation Five comes out. So you guys had one yeah. more story here that I didn't get a chance to look on into it. If you want to give me the details, but the Counter Strike co-creator has been arrested. And what? this is kind of like a dark turn for Pod Quest. Uh, me and Kelsey <laughs> kind of talked about it yesterday. We don't really want to spend a lot of time on this, just because of uh, what we're all in agreement, and it's not. Yeah. Much to discuss. It's just what he was really arrested disturbing. over. Um, oh, now that I'm looking at it, yeah, you're right. He was arrested for the sexual explo- exploitation of children. Uh, he's the co-creator of Valve's hugely popular Counter Strike, um, and he was arrested this week. Uh, he's 36, and he's been with them since 2003. So he created. Counter Strike when he was in his early twenties, which is one of the biggest games around. Yep. For so anything. he's doing. It says here he also worked on Half Life Two, Team Fortress Two, Left for Dead Two, and Portal Two. Yeah, he has a very like, that's Valve. All yeah, two, so yeah. Valve stuff. Yeah. Very good track record. Uh, Valve has suspended him. Um, the article goes on to kind of describe what sexual exploitation of children could be, and it's a pretty large. So it uh, can include elements of commercial sexual abuse of a minor or depictions of minors engaged in sexual expo- explicit content. Ba- such basically, it's really dark, not good stuff. Distribution. 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 Distribution or possession of depictions of child pornography. So he could have... And this isn't good either. I'm not defending him. But uh, it could have been anything from actually having pictures of... Which, that's enough. Uh, or um, he could have been working on some kind of game that has an element of that in his personal time. Uh, anything like that. Um, so, yeah. It's pretty crazy news in the gaming industry. Especially mm-hmm. since you mentioned, or we had that quick little excerpt of uh, Microsoft and Valve. If that yeah. might sour that, but we'll talk about that again Maybe next Maybe that week. makes them more appealing if stock prices drop yeah. in the next little while. Yep. Who knows? Um, so yeah, that's really all the time I want to spend on it. You know, yeah, not it's much more best to not say. to best not to touch on that any further. But yeah, it's big news, and it is yeah. news. Well, the, um, like the Me Too and this time stuff, it's like it's everywhere now. Like yeah. gaming's not an exception. There was that uh, Quantic Dreams um, David Crane article just like two or three weeks ago, where they were saying um, he was fostering this really um, dirty like sexual environment at Quantic Dreams, and yeah, in well, Valve now and. Well, there's a lot of that going around too, because like, look at all the Hollywood actors who. Well, that's aren't... What I mean, yeah, that's the Me Too and the Times Out movements. They mm-hmm. started there with the Harvey Weinstein thing, and it's yeah. like every, it's politics, it's video games, like it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's, it's everywhere. moved on. Uh, internet channels have released people. Yeah, from even like their... yeah, YouTube channels and stuff. Like yeah, I was YouTube watching, uh, I used to watch a lot of movie fights, and uh, Andy something who used to run that. Yeah, I got canned for yeah for for sexual abuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's nuts. It is. It's a uh, interesting time in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. It's good. Good changes, though. Hopefully, yeah, we can get it is. past this stuff. Um, Speaking of changes, let's change this <laughs> subject. All right. Yeah, I can talk from, about that for a Back while, from the so. dark world, and let's bring ourselves back up back to, back the, to an equally dark world. Equally of dark game world. Movies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so today we are talking <coughs> video game movies, and this way, though, just to reiterate. We're talking about video games that have been made into movies. We will not be doing any movies that were made into video games. Yeah, that's another just, big just strictly yeah. one way only. So, um, 
how do you want to start this off here? Is there maybe a, we could give our examples of good ones or bad ones, like what we think? Are there good ones? Are there good ones? <laughs> I don't think there is. Question. That's, that's There's a good question. There's ones that people love and have cult followings, but I don't think anyone would say, like, this is a great movie. So yeah. me and Kelsey had a brief discussion before you arrived today saying – we won't talk about necessarily documentaries. Like on the King list. of Con, which you mentioned. Yeah, yeah that's we'll yeah. give that's them a good mentions. One. They're good movies based on video games, but it's kind of a different. But topic. it sounds like we obviously want like the like the Hollywood blockbuster esque movies. International so. live action. So no animated stuff. So, but we can like I did a little list here of animated stuff that's really um, made like a big, st- like a big splash. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two, there's been like four Street Fighter movies, animated movies. The first one was really good. Uh, Tekken had a bunch. Uh, King of Fighters, Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, Pokemon. Oh, okay. Personas had a few as well. Uh, the Resident Evil animated ones, not the live action. Okay, so we're not. Okay, so we're, it's best to not touch the animated ones because that's kind of a. They're kind of the whole different game. Those are usually actually those are probably yeah, the good yeah, ones. Those I think are yeah, better. <laughs> yeah. And because it's, so it's easier to transition a video game into an animated movie. Yeah, so instead of just saying, out. "Hey, we have." You know, Ryu from Street Fighter. Okay, who's our Hollywood actor who's going to be Ryu? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, not yeah. just we draw Ryu as he is in the video game. And most and video shoot. games are so fantastical, either sci-fi or fantasy, um, mm-hmm. that the budget's required to make those into live action. I think it's a, a huge disadvantage over something animated. Because I know, like that. I know when you guys when I when I think video game movies, um, just for me, whether they're good or super bad, and this the um, obviously the Mario <laughs> Brothers movie. Yeah, it's super a bad. One. Um, but it's one for, of those ones that's so bad that people like it now. Yeah, but well, on that on that note, for movies that are bad but people like it, for me, it was the Mortal Kombat movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. They, they, totally they were bad, but main. I liked the Mortal Kombat movies. Yeah. And then, but there are a lot of bad ones. Just in preparation for our discussion here, I watched uh, Doom uh, uh, yeah. two nights ago. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> That is such. It a... was interesting though because like it's got a lot of big actors in it because it's got The Rock, it's got uh, Carl yeah, Urban, Carl who Urban. we had visit us last year at FanCon. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of cool to see, you know. I used some... to watch the Mario Brothers movie constantly as a kid and not realize it was bad. Like I really, really enjoyed it when I was like ten well, to fifteen. Yeah, yeah, it's also the thing too is like as a kid you love, you know, you don't, you don't critique stuff as much as you do as an adult. Mm-hmm. absolutely so, like, like nowadays the, like if i went back and watched the mario movie i actually i did that before a little while back when i was like scrolling through netflix and i came across the original power ranger stuff i'm like hey let's watch the first episode just see how it yeah. i had to turn it off because it was just so bad yeah it's bad uh like street fighter to me with van john claude van damme i think yeah. it's still an awesome movie i really enjoy that but it's not the problem with movies being made video games being made into movies is they kind of miss what's encompassed like what the video game is all about. Yeah, and I just throw Mortal Kombat is the only one that like stuck super close to his source material yeah. and like actually really tried to it. make the game into a movie rather than change it enough to make it a movie on its own. And Street Fighter kind of did, but they just kind of changed it around to fit their leading man. Like yeah. Van Damme's really big, so now was Giles he, are made. I was gonna character. say, was he Guile? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they kind you of kept some stir. No. I, oh really? I, I know. All I remember is bits and pieces of it, and I remember like the very ending where like they just suddenly go, ah, and then they do the title screen, and yeah. that was it. Like that's as much as I remember. Um, I'm I just rewatched that with bison. some friends like in October. Um, it was so much fun watching it with a group of people that I was really that into it. The, I love it's that so weird how they just like jam characters in there after a point. Like you get halfway through the movie, and they're like. There's T Hawk just hiding yeah. in the background. <laughs> remember that Taylor, doctor? Like, now he's Del C. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty that's ridiculous. Pretty, it's pretty good. Um, but there's been a, so in the early nineties, uh, we had kind of the boom of video game movies, starting with Mario brothers, yeah. uh, street fighter, double dragon. Yeah. Would you that... say more eighties instead of nineties or like, no, early those 90s. Are coming early out 90s. 90s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even though a lot of the properties are, cause I'm just 80s. thinking, cause I'm thinking back to like Mortal Kombat stuff and like, it seems still like very like cheesy eighties oh, action movies, All but I guess movies. that was also still the turn of. Because well, that movie Street came out in like, 95, 96. Was and it? Mortal Kombat was right. probably 94, 95 as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, so 90s. But because you got to think when the first Mortal Kombat game came out. Yeah, that was 92. 92, I think. 92, yeah. Yeah, it was Pretty, Mortal okay. Kombat 1. Well, before me. Um, <laughs> and then that kind of got the ball rolling on uh, video game properties, and none of them were necessarily good. 
Double Dragon especially yeah. was very bizarre and away seen that from since I was a kid, yeah. source material. It, I watched like it, a. It must have been so bad because I wasn't not aware that there was a Double Dragon movie. It's pretty. I watch it because it's another one that's so <coughs> bad it's good. Like it's so crazy, and that they try to make sense. Its source material is so simple yeah. to translate into a movie, and they just went crazy with it. Yeah, there's like they're in the distant future, and there's like you can mutate people, and there's a guy that possesses mutants, and there's getting wasn't the world. Wasn't Double Dragon just two guys who go fight a bunch of guys in the their, street and go like save stolen. their girlfriend? And yeah, yeah, and that's it. Street gangs and save her. It's a simple concept, <laughs> and it could have been such a cool movie. Like, yeah. Um, and kind then like a roadhouse style, like just action yeah. movie. It yeah. Okay. What, what else you got? Like, let's, let's go through the, um, let's go through the years. Then we got Mortal Kombat coming in after those three. And that one spawned a franchise. Yeah. And that one spawned a two movie franchise. And the second one came out not two. I think there's three of them, isn't there? No, there's no, only two there's Mortal only two. Kombat movies. Just a uh, regular one in Annihilation? Yeah. I thought they had one after that. No. But there was one that was raid like a newer, like web series that was recently yeah. made, but Maybe not a movie. Yeah. The web series so. was actually, but we're not talking about web series, but yeah. the web series was good. Yeah, we're talking about movies. Um. Okay, yeah, I remember the Mortal Kombat ones. Those were the ones that, like, for me are, they're bad, but they're so bad that yeah. they're funny and they're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then after that, we had kind of, like, a little bit of a downturn in the production of video game movies. We had Wing Commander, which came out later <laughs> in the 90s, which yeah. is based off of a PC space fighting simulation i'd say it's a good description yeah. uh and it was also very far from its source material okay. and wasn't that good it was pretty and bad weird cause and like, it had a huge cast I th- if i remember eventually correctly. the game started having people like mark hamill in yeah. them too and yeah like they were very cinematic games and they couldn't make that into a movie so <coughs> weird um all right keep going Let's uh see. and then there was a uh, the Dark Times, the dark where nothing, <laughs> nothing really came out for probably till th- like mid two thousands. Yeah, two thousand six, two thousand seven. Because that's kind of where my gap of movie memory. Because for me, I'm thinking the next thing is going to be like Resident Evil and Tomb Raider. Like those are probably the next ones that are going to be on your list. Yeah. So Resident Evil came out. The first Resident Evil came out kind of like ninety nine, two thousand. Uh, and then the next one, Resident Evil two, I don't think came out until two thousand four. Or 2005. Those make a ton of money. And then there's been... How many Resident Evil movies? Seven? Yes. One, two, three, four. I think they just had the sixth one. Or no, maybe they are seven. I think it's six or seven. Because there's a three, and then they kind of rebooted the franchise again. It's Yeah, it's somewhere there. It's six I've, or seven. I've seen them all at one point. I just don't. So, and that's count. like reached... That's gone 99 to... 2017 yeah so that's a huge they're still yeah they're still ongoing the most successful they also had silent hill around that time like in the early 2000s and then it took yeah. a big break until silent hill 2 i think for that one yeah came out sean bean sean bean yeah, that's right okay um tomb raider movies we yeah. also had i remember um, tomb raider i think uh that was another one that came out maybe in the early 2000s but then took a big break yeah again Tomb Raider was okay, it just wasn't that good. But there's a new Tomb Raider coming out that's supposed to be like almost it almost looks like shot for shot based off of the last the newest newer the le- remake Legends? of what's No of what's like game called? the of Tomb, Tomb Raider from yeah. for like Xbox One. Yeah, yeah. Like it seems it's almost like cut and paste story for that <coughs> one. So I'm kinda excited for that one. Uh Doom also came out around uh, two thousand five, <laughs> two thousand six, <laughs> which we've talked about, which was uh, I feel that that's another... It was The Rock, right? Yeah, yeah. The Rock and Carl Urban. I feel it's another movie that is pretty straightforward and probably could have been made into not when a I, When I was movie. watching it, because you know, cause I love the newer Doom game, and I was watching it, I'm like, okay, I kind of get a story, and it's kind of Doom-esque, but it's... To me, it just felt like they jumped the shark because, like, they eventually got to the point where they do like the first-person view where him like running around, like it's supposed to look like the video That's game. That's my mode. favorite part of it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah, they're kind of like, trying to create that thing, but it just it was not a good movie. Um, that I got a very big Predator vibe from that because that's when The Rock was just starting to become. Big. A big actor, and like he did Scorpion King, everybody was like, oh, that's The Rock's Conan the Barbarian. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, so we'll put him in Doom, and it will be his predator. Nope. <laughs> um, so like I feel that they were trying to put The Rock, turn The Rock into the new Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, that's that just wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. We needed that, because wasn't he governor at that time? 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We, everyone was looking for that big action star replacement, and The Rock eventually took it, but yeah, definitely had a rough. rough okay. Start. What else have we got? Uh, then we get into like a a bar- vomit Hollywood Explosion. vomit <laughs> of, of movies. Uh, we have Max Payne. Mark Wahlberg. Okay, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Hitman, which eventually had a sequel, but it was uh, a reboot. Right. Um, Prince of Persia. Yeah, uh, that one was not good. Uh, all the Resident Hall. Evils. Resident Dead Evil. or Alive. Uh, oh, was... I remember that one. Actually, that, one. that was an, actually that was funny because that one was like a return to "It's so bad that it's funny." <laughs> yeah, um, and that kind of leads us up to more current stuff. Current stuff like uh, oh no, there was House of Dead, House yeah. of the Dead. Uh, there was like four Tekken movies that have come out live action. Um, King of Fighters. There was a live action movie. <laughs> yep. uh, then we have Need for Speed. Um, Assassin's Creed. Uh, I already forgot about that. That's there was the, that there was ago. Warcraft that came World out. World of recently. Warcraft came out, or Warcraft, yeah. I guess. Which I heard from from fans of it that it was not too bad. It tanked. In it the it didn't do well, but, but apparently it, for like people who are like major World of Warcraft fans, they actually in, enjoyed it enough. There is a sequel because it did so a uh, coming because it did so well in the Asian market. That's happening mm-hmm. a lot lately. Yeah. yeah. Um, Asian sorry, going dry. back to your because you said like King of Fighters and stuff. One thing I just forgot that I think th- were you're talking about like these were American Hollywood ones, not like you know Asian um, the live first actions. King of Fighters and the first Tekken had a American release. Okay, uh, not huge though. Because I was just thinking because there's a lot of like Asian live action movies that are yeah. based yeah. on yeah. video games that are actually really good. Yeah. But we obviously don't get them here. Yeah, we so I just yet. thought that maybe we should make sh- mention that we're actually yeah. talking about more of the Americanized ones. The uh, sequels to the Tekken movie were Asian productions. Okay. Um, and I've never seen them, so I can't. You know, some of the Asian ones are just as bad. That's but they true. have a little bit of a better budget, so like the effects look better, but everything else is still... Like, the Hollywood just can't nail casting and scripting and story wrapped around a game they just can't like comprehend that yeah because yeah. i'm just thinking back to now to assassin's creed that a lot of people had an issue with that where it was the only assassinating stuff that happened was maybe 10 15 minutes in the of the entire movie and that was it yeah the rest of it just took place outside of not assassin's creed and so like it, what was the point of the movie fastbender in that who's yeah. a huge name huge yeah. name he, well fastbender i feel is kind of dipped and since Assassin's Creed, maybe? Since X-Men Age of Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of kind of taking a nosedive. Um, I guess we're getting to the end of the list here. We're getting pretty close with uh, Rampage coming out, which is... <laughs> oh, I saw the preview for that. Oh, no. ...movie for uh, The Rock to take on and just anybody to make because it's... How do you make a movie out of that game? When's the last Rampage game that came out even? Like, that is not 64? a relevant uh, title to... Yeah, I don't know these days yeah it's a really weird one um maybe we'll get a new game new rampage game i'm okay that rampage games are yeah. fun they're fun arcade things. games yeah only um, they get to play is the rock only, <laughs> exactly uh a giant rock climbing on buildings smashing <laughs> them um and in this list i was kind of like i pulled up a big list and i was going through animated and all that kind of stuff uh i saw well, this is gonna i told kelsey he gotta get a chuckle dustin this might blow your mind Mm-hmm. Uh, untitled live action Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Oh yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> like that, t- I saw that and I was like, "What?" And then obviously, um, Detective Pikachu is gonna have live action. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So yeah, you consider that a, a video game movie? Oh, and Blood Rain had uh, a release in the early two yeah. thousands. Back to bad again. Yeah. yeah, and it. <coughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, I remember and... hearing about the Sonic the Hedgehog one that they were in the works of it, and people are like, "Ugh." Don't know about that. Um, also, in the name of the king. I'm not familiar. Um, I think it's it was with uh, Jason Statham, and I think it's uh, Baldur's Gate. Here, let me bring it up really quick. Oh, you guys, uh, talk maybe amongst yourselves. So, do you have an like? It kind of seems like we're split into three eras, like the, that early '90s, like initial boom, the like kind of resurrection in the early 2000s, and, and then, then it's more, gone rampant. Like, then modern. Do you have a favorite yeah. era of those three? Probably for me, I would probably have to say probably the 90s ones. 
because, like they you said, like, the, the movies that they were just so bad that they were good, and then a lot of the newer ones, like it sounds like, sorry, the more modern ones, like new ones, are kind of finally getting that idea of hey, we should actually need to incorporate this as much as we can because I think there's also rumors that maybe there's an Ar- Uncharted movie in the works. Yeah, probably. Yeah, which that, that would make sense. The, the Uncharted game itself already was a movie. You just played it. I don't like. It just seems it like lends Indiana well to... Jones again, though. Like, yeah, yeah, do we exactly. Need do we need my pro- <laughs> like? Yes, I need a new Indiana Jones. <laughs> That's done well because I love Indiana Jones. I love the Uncharted series, and it lends well, well see, to the cinematic universe. But they are going to be filming another Indiana yeah, yeah. Jones, but it's not going to be start filming for another two years. So the question is, can we get another Indiana Jones, or will we just get another? franchise that butchers a popular video game series and a popular movie genre and then it just falls into obscurity for me because i've played a good chunk of the uncharted's Mm -hmm. i really like them i love i like their stories i like how their stuff if they just keep that story with a good balance of humor and stuff i wouldn't mind having it alongside with indiana jones i think that's our best chance at a good video game movie that's Mm -hmm. actually realistically going to come out um, I wish they would stop focusing on taking like tropes like special moves or characters or something from video games and trying to make them just yeah. fan service and just focus oh. on making a good story in that universe. Street right. Fighter Legend of Chun-Li. Oh, <laughs> man. I, I was just thinking movie. of one that was like a super bomb, but it's not a video game. It was an anime one, the Dragon Ball movie. Oof. Oof. That came out the same year as Street Fighter. That Road one was Shining. just like... <laughs> that was a bad year for Paul. That was a very <laughs> bad year. Um, Dungeon Siege, or In the Name of the King, based off the popular Dungeon Siege video games. Oh, series. okay. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, Jason Statham, um, Ray Liotta, Ron Perlman, just to name a few. Oh, that's and pretty had, good. And had Davies, I see um, there too. I forgot, awesome. I forgot about another one. Was, I guess it's kind of more in between. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Was turned into well, that's a. Based on the game, right? Not, not the, the video game. The pen and paper. Well, no, but it's pen and paper game. But it was still, still a, a game turned into a movie. That's true. Oh, and it was not that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were there any other board games turned into movies? Clue. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Battleship. Battleship. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that ever again. Battleship. Yeah, Battleship there, there's been. One. Dustin knows his bed. He board game movies. I know. It's, yeah. <laughs> He had his battleship set all into the uh, theater with him. A five. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a disaster. Yeah. Um. So nineties, nineties, nineties is our favorite. I think right across the table. Is. Yeah. yeah, the nineties. Like there, there are some like you know towards middle era where they they were still corny, but I don't think they're yeah. worth touching. Like, as much as I enjoyed watching Street Fighter with with some friends. That's not something I can do often. Like I have to give it a few years breather in between each viewing. Whereas Mortal Kombat, I thought was good enough that I can watch that one like once a year. I could yeah. watch. I could watch Mario Street Fighter Mortal Kombat once a year. I like them that much. Um, Mortal Kombat Two is going to be. It's like I a, don't know if I could do the Mario one though. <coughs> Mario one, like I think I've. I don't know if I could. Like for me, it'd have to be like two how, years in between. How old were you it. when you first saw the Mario one though? Uh, six, seven. So I think it might be. Well, that's actually younger than I thought. Because I, I can remember yeah. renting it because I was like, "Oh, there was a Mario Brothers movie. I want to watch." And then I'm like, I remember watching it as a kid, and it was funny though. I did end up rewatching it, but I think through like <laughs> towards the end, I'm like, I must have said like, it must have been when I was just like activating my adult part of my brain. Like, what did I just watch? <laughs> and then I watched it again so, because yeah. that would have been the same. Like we would have been eight or nine probably yeah. when that movie came out. And like we mentioned it, somehow The Simpsons came up in a few podcasts ago. And like I said, like we lived through the like prime of like when Mario was like everywhere. Huge. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it was in your happy. We're meal. Mario, it and was... I was probably on the trail end because yeah. for me it would have been Mario World and then like Mario sixty four. Yeah. yeah, and that's right. Yeah, when the PlayStation started coming out and Mario started losing a bit of relevance, and you had all these other franchises coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, remember, <laughs> I saw Mario and Street Fighter in the theater. Um, Lucky, yeah. Um, really big moments because I remember they used to have the Street Fighter arcade, Street Fighter Two in the I think theater. it was everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most one of the most popular, if not the most popular, arcade games ever made. Yeah, I think maybe Pac Man has it yeah. beat, but outside of that, yeah, it's pretty yeah. high up there. Um, and I, because of that, I have a fondness for them where I can watch them over and over again. Like, uh, and the Mario movie had a great 
cast. Um, what was the main? Yeah. What, what was Mario's? The actor that played Mario. Yeah. Um, I um, we had John Leguizamo as Luigi. There you go. Dennis Hopper as Bowser. Super. Why can't I think of him? Bob Hoskins. Bob, Bob Hoskins. Hoskins. Yeah. There you go. And Bob Hoskins like is an awesome actor. Who, but uh, to this day, those. he regrets that movie. Yeah. He, it's so funny watching behind the scenes. So of that now. I watched a documentary on uh, that movie recently. Um, on the, YouTube, like, drunk through most of the filming, and uh, well, and also, uh, the film had a director that came on to do it, and then he left for some reason, and then they brought on a brother and sister, right? Eh? Uh, wife and husband, wife and, husband. Wife and hun- husband crew, and they had no idea what the movie was about, and they were like just the worst people to work with. The conditions were really bad. Everybody was unhappy all the time. Am I right in remembering that they didn't ever do another movie again after that too? Yeah, I think that was their last yeah. one. Um, and then they were kicked off. And then somebody else came on to kind of like piece together the remnants of what was made. And like the last bit of shooting, everybody was like happy again and wanted to be there. <laughs> like it was just the entire movie was such a disaster. Such a gong show. And even like the people at Nintendo when they first came and saw the sets and stuff like that. And kind of like we see what you're trying to do with like a neo-noir type thing. And we like it. It, I think it lends well to Mario, but then that couple that came on really butchered what was envisioned and stuff like that. So like, there's potentially a movie out there that could have been good, but yeah. we didn't get that. Before we get to, because I saw that our next note for this topic was we were going to talk about what video game properties we want to see made. Um, my question is, how do you think they could improve on that Mario movie? Like, what do you think they need to do if they were actually to justify to make a good Mario movie? I think just what they're doing now, just make it animated. I don't think there's any way to make a good live-action Mario I movie. I think there is. I, I think there's a good way I to do it. vehemently disagree. <laughs> I, uh, it, it's, you're going to have to really... So, like, how do, how do we get away from the bullet bill-powered jump boots and the them. super scopes for no apparent reason that just shoot... The de-evolution guns. De-evolution <laughs> rays or whatever. <laughs> And little itty bitty bombs that as soon as someone sees it, everybody panics like a nuclear bomb and runs away. Well, that was arguably the closest thing. <laughs> yeah. From the properties was the bomb. Uh, Not Bertha. Yeah. That was always my favorite part as a kid. What? What was she? She or was Yoshi. The, the Yoshi. Yoshi was an actual dinosaur. Yeah. It's like um. <laughs> um, I feel that y- because eighties movies didn't rely so heavily on special effects. Hmm. And we got some pretty amazing visually crafted movies. Uh, even into the like Jurassic Park, the first Jurassic Park, 1993. Yeah. Uh, all the animatronics and stuff in that movie were amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to concentrate more on scripting. 100%. Because people that write these movies, I feel, are trapped in a glass cube and don't interact with other people because a lot of the interactions in these movies, that's not how people interact with each other. It's not how social interactions go. Um, We also, at that time, too, we didn't have people involved in the movies that actually liked and were in the video game realm. They They were were just money grabs. Just money grabs. Now we can have more passion-based projects. People grew up with these games that... Like the the guys who did the new Castlevania Netflix series, it's really good because yeah. you have guys that love Castlevania writing and and work in the movie industry. Like it, it's a good, actually, which good is mesh. funny because actually that could actually be like if like you said if you had someone who was dedicated who actually loves it, Castlevania would probably be a good movie. It lends huge to it, live yeah. action. Yeah, that could um, be done live action. Like Mario, I think if you took like Conan the Barbarian and replaced Arnold Schwarzenegger with two <coughs> plucky plumbers it would be good like it has potential it just went too far the original movie went how do you too do, far the other way how do you do the antagonist that's more what i have a problem with than than the brothers um have an actual animated dragon or an animatronic bowser would be awesome it would, that look, would look so ridiculous i think it looks sweet <laughs> i think it look really good like any of the jim henson do, stuff do you do you like, scrap a was, bunch of lore too like do you have like toads in there and and the mushroom kingdom and stuff why not why why not have toads look at wizard of oz like wizard of oz is essentially mario (laughs) like really it is look look at uh the newer charlie the chocolate factory the oompa loompas it was the same actor yeah they just they had him in the scene he steps forward one spot they cut 
he moves over to the left and he walks forward on that one and they just did that 50 yeah. times and then they just put all the images on top of each other. So that's why there's 50 Oompa Loompas in one scene, but it's just one actor. So they could easily do that as with Toad. How do you make that movie intriguing when, when Mario's never, ever been about story? What What's the driving force that gets you interested? The princess is kidnapped. Is it, we've seen that a bunch of times. Like yeah. That's not exciting. But that's not what the game is. So you it you is. want me to make the movie exciting not based on anything that the games are based on, is what you're telling or, me. Yeah, I think you scrap a lot of source material. Or to, what to if we pull a fun. Captain N and the movie is like a kid or something gets pulled into the game? Last action Mario. Yeah, last well, action. Well, essentially <laughs> that's what the original Mario was, two <laughs> plumbers that get pulled into a They, well, they got pulled into a world, but <clears throat> it was, like you said, they went way too off left side. I don't, I don't. I don't want that duck out of water story anymore. Like, just give me people who are gonna watch Mario know what Mario is. So you don't need to do a bunch of like world building and a bunch of like origin story stuff. It's like getting six Spider-Man movies that give you the same origin story mm-hmm. over and over. Yeah. I, we don't need that. Except anymore. for Homecoming. That. Homecoming got rid of that. Yeah, people love that. They're exactly. like, we already know what it's and about. It worked. We don't. Everybody knows who Mario is, even if you're not a gamer. Mario is probably one of the most recognizable. Even if you don't know him, I don't think his origin's interesting enough you ever need to touch on it. Same with, you know, it couldn't be this guy who spends moonlights in the Mushroom Kingdom, or he now lives permanently in the Mushroom Kingdom. He's There's a brief discussion about how he misses his, uh, where he used to live. Mm-hmm. Bowser crashes through the wall, kidnaps the princess, or does something else. Like, Bowser could be, you know, doing some kind of strip mining <laughs> operation in the Mushroom Kingdom that they're against, and... Uh, he's enslaved a bunch of toadstools, and I'd be, I'd be more interested in seeing like a Mario RPG kind of story adapted than a traditional platforming Mario. Sure, kind of adapted, I think. But I think it can be done. The conversation about it can't be done. I think a good Mario movie can be made. Live I'm kind of swinging towards Kelsey's side, saying maybe Mario should only be animated only. Ugh, no, I, I, I'm having a hard time I, picturing the live action parts now. I can definitely. I think it'd be awesome. I think you'd have a really uphill battle trying to. Pitch, pitch that, that and storyboard that and get that funded like well like i said labyrinth is kind of like a mario movie it's a girl that comes out of nowhere and she's got to fight against goblins and <laughs> like this mario-esque world with an evil emperor who's sure, but he mario's very powerful and he gets more powerful as he finds power-ups and stuff whereas she was kind of she had to outsmart people or like learn from mistakes like so, like I... you're talking about how we don't need to have a lot of the stuff, you can remove some of the things that makes Mario powerful. I think that's taking away too much of the core. I, I See, do... now you want your cake and to eat it, too. I, like I, I do. There's some ways. middle ground that I don't know where that line falls, but I think you have to strip away a lot of Mario stuff, but keep just enough that he's recognizable as Keep Mario. the stuff that you want, but yes. lose the stuff you... Yeah, see, exactly. it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Like... <laughs> that's what happened with the first movie, was <laughs> people what? with that frame of mind probably thinking about that it's like well we need to strip away this but keep that keep that keep that but how are we going to do that oh yeah well let's put fungus know. everywhere yeah so you know you either have to have everything you know you can't cherry pick what you want or you have you gotta have everything or nothing yeah it's like building a basketball team and just like cherry true. picking you know oh i really like that guy i really like that guy i really like that guy well they're all point guards so how's so the score team? all the baskets yeah. <laughs> um so, you know, you can't necessarily have it like that. I Yeah, I think they just stick animated with that one, and, and they can do anything they want then. I'm, I'm sticking with they can do it. Animated's the best way to go. But uh, I'd like to see, like, a dark, gritty... Detective Mario. Yeah, like Batman. <laughs> the Dark Mario Rises. It's me, Mario. <laughs> it's me, Mario. I'm looking for the princess. Where is the princess? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just run this. I just guard this place. Where is she? Where is she? Uh, well, then let's go to, I guess, our final part of this conversation. Uh, video game properties that we personally would like to see made into a movie and possible casting choices. I had a lot of fun thinking about this. Yeah, I've been diving deep into things <laughs> that I think would be pretty awesome. I think I've come up with a pretty good one that seemingly I, already has a movie I have made maybe four. I... I didn't really come in prepared with this because like the casting part is going to be hard to do but movies that I think would probably be interesting would probably be good. Why don't, do you want how do you do we just want us one of us just list off a yeah, couple Paul, in a row Paul go first uh, what you got for us well 
Street Fighter needs to be made proper. Okay. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I agree to that. Into a live action movie. Um, you can have uh, the Rock as Sigot. Would make a perfect he, Sigot. He'd be a good Sigot. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Could um, they bring in those? Oh, I'm trying to think what is. <laughs> he's a, he's an Asian Asian actor, but it's the like the really good like action movies and stuff. I can't remember his name. He's right Korean. Now. Um, yeah, you yeah, know who I'm talking about. Back. He was in I Saw the Devil. Uh, he'd also be really good in that. Uh, Tony Shaw. Yeah, that that's that's him. You. Tony Shaw would be bring good. him into there. Like uh, actually make it like a martial arts esque. Yeah, the so guy. Do you, that... do you like Bloodsport or like the Quest? Like, is that the type of movie you're doing with it? Is it a es- tournament? Essentially, that's like I guess Bloodsport is my properly made Street Fighter. Yeah, movie. When I saw the Quest, I was, and it has Jean Claude Van Damme yeah. too, just like Bloodsport. I'm like, this is would you, Street Fighter. Yeah. Like, there's would a, you there's maybe a do it as a movie like country. say? Um, you know, there's big tournaments being held, but maybe the grand prize is something like it's dark and sinister. And so like, see, like agencies are requesting like this person be their agent into it and stuff. I think that goes too far away from it. The way you could incorporate that is have Guile having to meet with Chun-Li because Guile represents the U.S. military and Chun-Li represents Interpol. Um, so they could be kind of agents going you, into, but you don't want that to be a big part of the story. You don't narrow, want to, do you make the cast? Because uh, Street Fighter's got this massive roster now. Pick the mains and two maybe fan favorites? Well, there's not a lot of characters in the original Street Fighter, like eight, mm-hmm. and then the boss characters. Do you stick with that, though? Because that's so old now. Like, Do you want to put more characters from four and five in there? If it becomes a success with the original eight characters in a movie, then you... Do you, really, people. do you really want Dalsim and Blanca? You can have them in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dalsim, I definitely think, can fit in the movie. Because you don't necessarily have to... It depends how crazy you want to get. Do you want to ground it into a realistic martial arts movie? You can still have Dalsim where he has... Sure, he just doesn't stretch 10 feet yeah, and teleport he, and stuff. You know, he has a bottle with alcohol in it or breathe, something in it and he blows fire. fire at you. Okay. You can have that. You can kill off a lot of the people in the first one. Um, you know That that would add some stakes to it that I, yeah. I may think might make more interesting. See, and that's how you can like front load it. You have... Uh, in Bloodsport, did a uh, montage at the beginning of Bloodsport. Can we kill Dan in the beginning of the movie? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, he's just the regular movie, guy. Yeah. All right, let's do this. And then he gets his heart like exploded. And then, oh, no. What was it, his it, name? It was like in every movie. It was like Dan. <laughs> Wasn't Dan the last guy? What a coincidence. Um, you keep showing back up somehow. Oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, because at the beginning of Bloodsport, they had a montage, a quick montage going over all like the main people you'd see in the movie and they were doing training one guy was yeah. kicking through boards one guy was kicking through ice the monkey guy climbed the tree and hit the coconut the sumo guy threw a bunch of people like you could do it like that really easily Zengi fighting a bear <laughs> why not Love and then that. you don't have you have like a eight person tournament and you don't have any garbage people that they fight no wasted fights right so you don't have so you uh, see all the matches in this yeah. movie you don't have um Ryu fighting Johnny Nobody for no reason in a prelim match. Like, that's not important. We don't need that. You don't... So, yeah, get rid of... Don't have garbage right. people just, in You it. said Rock is Sagat. Do you have any other casting ideas? Um, I feel the... He's Korean. Uh, I can't remember his name. He was in... He played uh, Storm Shadow in J.J. Oh. The White Ninja. I know him. Uh, it's like John Yun Yuk or something like who, that. Who would he, who would he play though? He could play Ryu easily. I feel yeah. that. Uh, well, Ryu's be... Ryu's got to be pretty buff though, because he's pretty. That bulked. guy's pretty buff. Okay. That guy's pretty buff. Um, who would play Ken? I'm not. You got to have sure. some sort of Hollywood. Super Billy star. Zane. Um, <laughs> Zac Efron. Uh, yeah, he he got pretty ripped. Yeah, yeah in the Baywatch, Baywatch movie. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. There's. Guile, I don't know who would be... Um, they don't all have to be somebody's either, Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. You, you want <coughs> them to be recognizable, like, oh, I recognize that guy. But you don't want them to be... You know, Zangief could be the mountain, the guy that played the mountain. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That like, would be good. Um, Thor or something or other. Yeah. Yeah. Thor, yeah. Um, you know, Guile could be Tom Hardy. Yeah, he'd be pretty that. American looking. Yeah. Tom Hardy could... Like, he's... Pretty versatile. You could cast him as Bison too, or yeah, like, he could he could be a bunch of characters. Fast Bender could be Bison, or no, nah, he's not big enough. 
Bison's pretty intimidating. That's figure. true. Yeah. Uh, anyways, who is who's the girl? I can't remember her Cammy? actress. No. Oh. So I'm. Sorry. <laughs> Hang on. Let me finish. With, in Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, the blue face. Um, Karen Gillan. Yeah. Who, what was her character's name? Uh, Nebula. 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 Bring her in as some sort of femme fatale character. Yeah, easily. Like I, the, I, I like uh, to see like for the newer characters, I like to see Jury come in. I like her. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe use like, use her as one of those femme fatale characters, or or like you said, or put bring in Cammy or something. Carrie Jones could be like a sea viper or something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, Ooh, sea viper would be a good one. Yeah. Uh, and that would be you know you bring them in in a sequel because the first one you want it to be based yeah. on the tournament, and then the sequel is the fallout to the tournament like. Right. But, you know, Bison's now dead. You get more into the Where reason of why. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. More into the reason of why Bison was holding the tournament. So you um, get into, like, Shadowloo stuff in yeah. the sequels. And then this, the first one could be a martial arts <laughs> tournament movie. The second one can be your... Action, espionage Yeah, so do you, in all these sequels, if it's a franchise, each one's it's a different genre, maybe? Yeah. You know, and the second one, they're trying to figure out what was Bison's master plan? Is he really dead? And where's Ryu? Ryu's not the main character in this one. We're trying to find Ryu. And then maybe the third one, we reveal evil Ryu or something like that. You know, that would be being, sweet yeah. to like pull out like the third. Movie yeah, exactly. And then that comes back to like a like a seventh samurai type movie with Akuma and Ryu, and maybe they're the only. Maybe in the fourth one, they're the only two characters we kind of concentrate. The only two we see where he's dealing with his evil side and he's trying to track down Akuma who's this evil entity and blah 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 blah. Like, right, okay. I'm, I'm getting sold so that, out so that would be your, your choice as a street fighter? Uh, choice number one. I have another choice that I think is really awesome. Alright well why don't we let Kelsey have a choice now. Alright I get two as well so I'll start with <laughs> You can have as many as you want. Yeah, just two. Well we're, we're kind of on a one, time restriction here. The though, one I so. think would actually get made make a bunch of money and it would be easy to do sequels to and it doesn't matter who you cast in it would be Dead Space. Ooh, yeah, I think it'd be it's masked... super easy to do, and it's got this really cool lore with the like artifacts that make people go insane. And yep, and that horror... one would be good. That one would be good because it's horror, but you bring in the space aspect, yeah. or, like yeah. zero gravity and whatnot. That would be really good. So like yeah. like an Event Horizon kind of film um, where the budgets don't have to be crazy. Um, horror movies are typically really low budget, and they make a lot on the returns because they don't need to like Pandorum or yeah, they they like can that. make a couple million and still be profitable. So I think that one would be really, really easy to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of horror movies, but I I would like to see that, though. And that genre lends really well, because like you said, it doesn't take Resident Evil (coughs) movies and Silent Hill. It doesn't take a lot to make these movies profitable. Yeah. And people people like horror movies. Like, we might not be... I like horror movies. Um, Who would be be your leading man in that one? Because it's I don't think it matters. You got the mask on. All it needs to be is someone who's a scientist. He's not, like, a buff super dude. Like, you could get... uh, If you wanted a name behind it, you could get, like, Edward Norton or someone like that to do it. Somebody who, in their contract, doesn't say, I need my face to be on the screen X amount of minutes of this movie. Yeah. No Steven Seagal's. Yeah. Or uh, (laughs) Stallone's. He wouldn't fit in the suit. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think you can cast a nobody in that too, and, okay. and it'd be fine. Dead Space would be an interesting one. It would, it would probably help revive that series too. Yeah, it's kind of really it's kind of dead right now. Yeah. Cool. Pun intended. Okay. Yeah, pun intended. Uh, I guess that leads to me. Um, man, I'm trying to pick. I, I have like five in my head. I'm trying to think what would be the best two. Narrow them down. Um, <laughs> just to get it out because we haven't touched on the genre yet. I'm thinking Legend of Zelda. A yep. proper yeah, that was on my short list. A proper a proper list live well. action Legend of Zelda would yep. be nice. It it kind of writes itself, you know. It doesn't have to like it's got like, a lot of well, cool source material you can blend from different. I know, yeah, but you could exactly. easily you could easily still do the story like you know maybe the princess approaches a warrior. He has to go find something because this evil entity is on its way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need to defend ourselves. The hero goes to or learns about himself, or maybe he's just a regular person. One of those typical. I'm a regular guy, but I discover who I really am yeah. kind of stories. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to blend stuff like visually from like Skyward Sword and, and Wind Waker together. So you've got like little pocket islands, like both in the sky and in the water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that'd be a really neat idea yeah. for that one. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't know if you'd cast in that. that. That's like another Zac Efron or uh, the younger Franco or... Well, no, but you could very... He you could, looks like an elf. <laughs> but you could very much go like Lord of the Rings-esque style. 
to yeah. it. Like yeah. still keep it yeah. like everything pretty legit. You know, obviously the creatures are going to be creatures, but you still keep it very practical. If you go in Lord of the Rings style, do you make it one movie or do you make it three movies that are one story? I think you might even make a couple movies. Because I was thinking because like if you take like Ocarina of Time, you have to go through eight dungeons and then the final boss. Yeah. So like how do you build up to that? You can't just have them go, oh, I found this thing and we found this thing and we found this thing and now we're done. I don't well, know if you necessarily in... need to go through all the dungeons, but it would be really cool to see like Young Link and, and uh, Old Link like, yeah. transition. Well, I want to see the worlds too. Like I want to see Zora's. I want to see. Yeah, yeah you got to go to the Gerudo Forest or the Gerudo Because like uh, you said, desert. let's bring in the mountain. He could be the, uh, Goron or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I think you could easily do um, like uh, Link to the Past, where in the first one he's fighting some kind of sorcerer, and he mm-hmm. defeats the sorcerer, and he goes through a bunch of different dungeons and some worlds, something like that. Then in the beginning of the second one, or the end of the first one, you learn that he's not the main bad guy; it's actually Ganondorf. Yeah. Or, or maybe, he, or like you said, maybe he has to go back in time, and then maybe they could do little hints, like say, you know, Link was fighting something, and suddenly this door blew open or something. And then maybe it was him Time in a dark travel, world, I think, in a getting al- into two... no alternate dimension or something like yeah. he, like in the next movie he does stuff that affects the events in the first movie. I actually really like this Link the Past idea because you can you can kill off your uncle at the end. He can be a major part of the first. Like if you put it into two movies, you can be traveling with your uncle. Um, what the heck is the wizard's name? Ragnheim or something? Something like that. Yeah. Ridiculous name. Um, so he's like, yeah, the villain of the first one kills your uncle, you defeat him, and then you end finding like the dark world. Yeah. And the whole second movie is the dark world and yeah. Ganon. Like, yeah. That's you could really even stretch cool out split. into three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where the the second movie is, <coughs> the first one ends with you killing that sorcerer and Link finding out about the dark world. The mm-hmm. second one is Link trying to find a way into the dark world. And yeah. He does more adventuring than the third one is. Yeah. The end of the, the first movie, world. you've just opened Pandora's box yeah. and. Yeah. I don't know if you need a big name for that either. Like Zelda's a big enough name that people recognize even if they don't play no. the game. I think but I'm just you, you got to picture like the right person for the right role. I think like you can't just have just no, you no, know. No. I think the director's more important in that film. Yeah, than yeah. The, the direction is too. Yeah. yeah, I think so as well. And like saying you have to be able to picture the right person, I don't think works necessarily anymore because like there's been so many castings done and people they are like look great he'll yeah. be a t- it's like yeah he looks like it but he's terrible or he'll never be a good joker and Heath Ledger blew it out of the water like yeah. that's true there's that's been true. so many castings where people are like that's not gonna work and I just works. I just don't want like the flavor of the month yeah. person to yeah. be the main actor and it's like oh, but okay, I don't I never I look at this movie ever again. I also don't want an old mainstay I don't want Tom Cruise running around his link you know what I mean yeah. like there's there's he's that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, he's running man. He's, he's yeah. the running male man. Cause. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so for my okay. second pick, I have a really hard time figuring out like the the obvious answer is Half Life. Okay. Because it works so well into a movie. Sci-fi, still realistic. Yet. You can, you know, you're doing. It's like a sci-fi horror. The first game was all in a facility. So it's, you know, not too hard. You don't need big sets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's a good Michael Fassbender movie to be Gordon Absolutely. Freeman. That'd be a good cast, yeah. Um, the second one movie is, like, more grand scale. You know, you don't need a lot of actors because there's a lot of mass people, generic scientists, blah, 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 blah. I think that one is, just like, I'm surprised it hasn't been pitched yet for a movie. Well, not that we know of. <laughs> um, but Smash TV. That's basically the running man. Exactly. I was going to say. <laughs> exactly. I love the running man. That's one of my favorite movies that Arnold Schwarzenegger's ever done. So what you want is you want us to remake running man and we'll just call it smash TV instead. Is it the rock in it? Who else do you cast? Well, I don't know. Who, you could have well, two players, right? So you could have the rock. But and... you don't like the smash TV guys were muscular, but they weren't huge. No, like I'm were... just saying like what other actor any do action movies these days like that. Um, Jason Staples. Jason Statham, which I don't I think really like him. he's getting a little old for that now. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, totally. Yeah, yeah. he could do that. Fast Benner. Those are my two go-to guys. Like, those two guys are... I don't know if I see him in that role as much as their, your last one. Gordon. Um, yeah. I think Chris Evans would go into <coughs> Smash TV. That's a good one, yeah. Um, kind of anybody in the MCU can kind of really work. Yeah. Like, a lot of the people that... Uh, I think Evans is the best... I think Hemsworth or uh, Downey Jr. do that as well. What about uh, Hawkeye? 
I'm sick of him and everything. I hate I, Jeremy I Renner, but he can be a good player too that gets killed in room six. <laughs> Hey guys, I totally found the. And I think, and it works so well because you can have like the funny, cheesy little guest yeah. appearances. Like one of the guys that's in the wall shooting the bombs. It's like, oh, it's, you know, so and so. It's like, oh, I didn't think he was in this movie. Lots of cameos, yeah. Yeah, lots of really random cameos. I think it'd be a fun movie to do. That would be really fun, yeah. yeah. And probably not a crazy budget either. Yeah. Other, other than if you're getting those actors in their roles, they're going to be yeah. the biggest cost. And then mm-hmm. uh, you can get somebody. Like, super, you can get Rob Downey Jr. to be the um, announcer. Yeah? Okay, he could play that role yeah. totally. Yeah. You gotta get Arnold to cameo on there too, in like the tank or something. Yeah, exactly. I think it'd be great. Tank boss. Yeah. I think it'd be a, I think it'd be a really He's fun He's movie. the head CEO of the broadcasting company and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Kill. Let's do it. He's Damon <laughs> Killian. Runners, let's get running! <laughs> I'd watch that. I don't think that movie would do particularly well, but I think it would have a little I don't cult know. following. I think it would actually do really well. Like this crazy action movie, if you market it correctly, I think <laughs> with like certain actors. Every, you're, you're might be honest something because everything for it seems like a long time, like ten years, I want to say, is so dark and serious lately. Having something that's a little more lighthearted and yeah. fun and campy would would maybe. And everything's over the thought, like. They take concepts and overthink it yeah. and oversaturate. Like the Resident Evil movies, eventually there was so much going on. It's mm-hmm. like she has special power. She has clones. Yeah, let's let's yeah, simplify characters it. Characters have disappeared for two movies are back now. Yeah, and it's, it's like what they were yeah. dead. No, what's what's your second choice, Kels? Um, this is never ever gonna happen, but I would love to see a three part Xenosaga series mm. of movies. Um, it's got a cool really unique cast it's got lots of uh, awesome space battles it's got lots of mech battles it's got lots of hand to hand battles it's very much going full sci-fi now absolutely yeah Yeah. like the budget on this thing would be enough to cancel it immediately Mm -hmm. (laughs) but um, you could cast like uh, I don't think you need a big uh, big name for Xion or Cosmos which are like the main characters yeah Um, I think you can just especially Cosmos she doesn't really need to emote because she's very robotic so you just cast a pretty lady in that role uh, again, you, again, you could go. Um, what was her name? Uh, again, from Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, she could do another robot. She's pretty good at that. Um, typecast. Typecast. Mm-hmm. She's she's not busty enough to be a cosmos though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think maybe put Brad Pitt because I put him in everything into uh, Ziggurat. Um, I want to say like Dakota Fanning, like 15 years ago, was Momo. Yeah. I don't know if a yeah someone like that exists these days. Um, Ryan Gosling as Junior. Oh, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, Ryan Gosling and Brad Pitt in one movie. Oh man, Ooh. I think we just showed our audience way too much. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that um, was a weird moment we just had there. It's got this really amazing <laughs> story through those three games, though, um, where you've got um, ancient artifacts, you've got space battles, you've got some political intrigue, you've got assassins. You've got um, the it's church a, just and a like, mix controversy. Of everything. Like it's it's got a lot of stuff to dig into. That I don't think you could do in one movie. That uh, is something that we haven't touched on yet. But I feel I'd like to see like an HBO series or a Netflix series. Like that would be a better that could ten be cool. hour episode. There are there are people who do say that like. Something like that, like an HBO special or something. Yeah. yeah. And just to, yeah, it like, would be better justice for a video, video game, game than just trying to cram everything all into one. Yeah. And that's it's beginning to look that's a better <laughs> like route if for maybe a lot you went things. take the Legend of Zelda route, but go Game of Thrones style. Yeah. Where you, it's it's you know longer like one hour episodically episodic stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and then you know you can do much. You know what would fit that good is uh, Fire Emblem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As a Game of Thrones style. You can have more content into it and like preacher from a comic book to a movie wasn't going to work mm-hmm. but from a comic book to a tv show worked quite well in the first season um and i feel with a lot of anime like akira would be a wicked show yeah. rather than a movie i think they and need to know when to games as well stop those too like i'm afraid like if they get really successful and the story's over they just like make terrible seasons after that and kind of yeah. add their own it's stuff happening to game of thrones <laughs> yeah I'm still into it though. Yeah, I know, yeah. Dragons guess, of Blue Fire. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, I guess we get you know, to my second us? choice. Yeah. Um, I know one of our earlier podcasts, I mentioned that I'd love to see the Metroid. Yeah. But they would probably be the same style, like to you, like your Dead Space. 
It would, yeah. but Metroid's but, already so super influenced by Aliens. Yeah. I don't see how that's not Aliens movie like yeah. just again. Um, but I, awesome. I did mention Castlevania earlier, which would be yeah. a good choice. But one that we haven't talked about yet, which I think probably wouldn't be too bad, a Metal Gear movie. Oh yeah, that was on my short list. Like it was Half Life. Like it, Metal it Gear, kind of has Fighter. it kind of has written itself. Yeah, like it's yeah. it's a stealth action movie. Yeah, for sure. Um, especially if it was who's Snake in your movie. We I travel back know. in time and get Michael Bean. Because he was used off the Terminator cover for that. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know I don't know who would be the main cast in it, but it does kind of it, it it's written itself. So Yeah, I think uh, like I said, like Half Life was such why it hasn't been done. That movie was also on my list, Metal Gear. Like how this hasn't been done already. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a little bit of supernatural Sci fi with I bet you they macro military ask shut it down for some reason yeah. or another. Yeah, like I think it uh it's yeah, like I said it's written itself. It'd be really awesome to see. Yeah, because there's a lot of characters in that one too, because there's Merrill, there's Snake, there's Otacon, Colonel Colonel Miller, Master Miller. Who ends up being liquid. Liquid. Because then, even if you did a metal and then the, gear, and then the sci- and then the sci fi you have the metal gear. Yeah. Even if you did a Metal Gear movie, it doesn't necessarily have to be Metal Gear Solid. Like Metal Gear, mm. I, I I like the story for, and the lore. For me, I it. think it have to be Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. The uh, I think for most people it probably would be. The uh, lore, it, just seeing uh, from the second Metal Gear, a live action fight between Snake and um, uh, Gray Fox in a minefield would be awesome. <laughs> like that to me is like that's super cinematic. Or the sni- or sniper wolf battle. Yeah, in the sniper versus sniper, yeah. like that's always a very interesting. Yeah. Action. There's tons of cool stuff you could do with that, and you could do a big franchise over it. Cool. Well, we got some interesting choices. We just need yeah. to get some pitches to Hollywood. And yeah. Name them down. Give me Smash TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> project number one. <laughs> yeah. I think that one would be the most fun to watch. Everything else we pitched is kind of serious. That yeah. one would be a. Uh, popcorn movie yeah i think so too yeah. it's a good summer blockbuster some good yeah. some good action movie one-liners yeah yeah exactly. stick around a lot of one-liners back that would be that'd be the movie to do it yeah yeah <coughs> i'm not made for tv <laughs> good stuff <laughs> good stuff good stuff all right well that's that was quite a good little discussion yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, I don't know if you guys are aware too. I actually heard a podcast recently where they were talking about some video game movies. The highest rated video game movies of all time. Do you know if you guess what they are? Resident Evil? Nope, not even close. Wait, highest rated? Yeah, like uh, Rotten Tomatoes rating. Um, I have a list. Give me a hint newer or older? Um, both fairly newer. Mm. Let me pull my list here. Like last four or five years. Four well, or five. Because I know maybe Warcraft. I was gonna I, say Warcraft I, made. I don't know a huge amount. No, of one's animated, one's live action. Oh, okay. Well, we weren't doing li- animated. Yeah. Okay, live action. Um, in the last, I don't know. Prince of Persia. Yes. No. Yeah, forty-four oh. percent, and that's the forty-four high. percent that's high for video game yeah. movies. Oh, uh, the other one was God. Angry Birds, which my son took. Oh, oh I didn't even know they made an Angry Birds movie. Yeah, it wasn't that good, and it was way after Angry it Birds was, Prime. It was very much a kids' movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the bar is still so low. Like, there's got to be. I hope this Castlevania Netflix series is the thing to like drive a whole generation of new mm, filmmakers yeah. to make some decent video game stuff. Um. Prince of Persia also suffered from poor casting. Yeah, I love Jake Gyllenhaal in I almost everything, yeah. and I was not into that casting as soon as they, they at least it. got the story right in Prince it's of Persia. It's accurate. They went. It was accurate. Sands of Time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Story? yeah. yeah. So it was. It was still accurate <coughs> to the story. So, but yeah, the casting. It was, it was and, another thing where the movie came out like way after its prime too. Like it had its big heyday in the like late eighties with the with the movements and how realistic they were, and then nobody cared about it until Sands of Time came out. And the sequels did okay, but not as good. And then, and then they made the movie. from relevance again, and then they made the movie when no one cared. Yeah. Yeah, I can recall <laughs> when they do that, when they go do the, oh, hey, we're making a movie. Oh, cool, what's it? It's Prince of Persia. No one cares about Prince of Persia. It died two years ago. Yeah, yeah. it was, like, big in the middle of the PS2 genre, there, yeah. era, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Sure struck with the iron. Iron was hot. Yeah. Or at least have a fourth game lined up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they had that really 
crappy one that came out on the PS3 and 360 as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of like a reboot. Well, I think that does it for this episode of mm-hmm. PodQuest. Um, again, to our viewers, if you have any ridiculous video game movies that you enjoy, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, we had a comment from Kentaro. Um, nostalgia goggles. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, last time. I don't remember. I just know he said a little lighter on the news and a little more flesh in the topic. Um, so I think we tried to do that today. We kind of breezed through news a little faster. Yeah. Um, spent a little time on our... Uh, Dustin, just pulling your comment up right now. Yeah, see if I can pull it up here. You it, Was it on the last podcast episode? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, it was on the crowdfunding one? Right. Definitely, yeah, because yeah. he said he hadn't done any game crowdfunding, but he's done some other things that he's crowdfunded. I think he's right about the news. Like, we were talking um, pre-podcast about um, maybe some things don't deserve a deep discussion, just a quick mention, yeah. and then uh, we'll try and keep it a little uh, smoother going forward. Mm-hmm. Growing pains. Mm-hmm. Growing pains. Always looking for critiques. Okay, no, not that one. I'm going to have to bring my laptop so I can have everything in front of me. Well, I was just, I was just checking to make sure it wasn't on the last one we did with uh, Jordan. Yeah. So. It was definitely on the... On the Kickstarter one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let see here. One comment. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the perfect length for an episode. I still feel like you guys spend too much time on news and not enough on the main topic of the episode. Also, I might be wrong, but do you post new episodes of the podcast on the same day each week? Uh, Working that out. If it's not, you really need to keep a schedule. It's uh, to the second question. It essentially comes down to how much time I have to edit yeah. because I'm the Dustin editor for the channel. Editor, yeah. And I have lots of stuff to edit, and then I still have a lot of stuff in my personal life I yeah. got to do. So the only reason why sometimes an episode maybe gets delayed by a day or two is either maybe I have a software issue with my software, or maybe I just have something in the in my. Mm personal life that gets in the way we always so want to get them I would, as quick as possible yeah, yeah we always use. try to get them out as quick as possible so yeah. at least sunday monday those are usually the days i try to get our podcast stuff out yeah we will probably try to keep a schedule for that one everything else might be as kind of random as it comes yeah. for now maybe i'll uh help dustin out here with some editing and stuff like that mm-hmm. now that we kind of have an idea of how we want it to look yeah, so. but yeah, we definitely have a structure. We're trying to at least have a video out every day. So, yeah. Yeah. so, um, right. but yeah, yeah, thanks again, thanks N- nostalgia goggles. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the for comment. Thanks for your support. Thanks for everybody else's support. And uh, we've already dropped a hint of what next week's topic's going to be. Well, not a hint. We just came out and said it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So if you have any topics you want us to cover, let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe. And also, don't forget to let us know about what your favorite video game movie is or your least favorite movie. Yeah, and what movie you want to see created, or what video game you want to see created into a movie. Yes, that would also be a good idea. I'd love to see other people's ideas and maybe stuff that we haven't touched on yet. Yeah, I would have never thought of, like, Smash TV, and that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, I guess this is game over for this week. Mm-hmm. Right. Roll credits.